Shark, happy 69th. I heard it was your shark day. It is my birthday, yep, 69, hard to believe. And that's been 51 years ago this month when I first uh, auditioned for my first professional wow. theatrical performance. Yeah, hard to believe. And I so you're it. just getting started. I'm just, oh yeah, that's right. I mean, you're, you're just getting, well, you're getting started too. You uh, color switch. That's right. Number one game in the world. That's, that's fantastic. And then, um, yeah, but I, uh, gosh, I remember it was like 1973. I was with a theater company. That's the one I was referring to. Um, Mar that's when Armando, Armando Lucero mm -hmm. came in. He was 17. And who is this? Mar oh, he's a very talented uh, sleight of hand close up magician. Wasn't he, he just performing at the Academy Awards? Uh, the the he was magical arts? Yes, yes, yeah. he was. Uh, yeah, you bet. That's right. He was there. And uh, yeah, he, exactly. He's an extraordinarily talented young man. We met when he was 17, I was 19. He lied to get into our theater company. Ooh. He had to be 18. So he was already ready to be a magician. He was already ready to be a magician, deceiving everybody. And uh, but we, anyway, he was uh, just so much fun and so talented. And, he, and I actually, when he moved, when he first joined, I said, move in with me. Because I saw some of the stuff he did, and I wanted to, I'm going to learn everything he has. Sneaky sharks. Yeah, sneaky sharks, that's right. And then uh, and we, we would hang out at uh, Chuck Martinez, you talk about the castle. That's the current president of the castle, right? President of the castle, that's right. And uh, we've known each other since we were kids, for the most part. He, he had a magic shop in San Diego area, and his mom, uh, Mary, well, ran it. And uh, I always thought he was older than I was hmm. because he always seemed more mature. And it turns out I'm a year older than he is. So he just turned 68 and wow. I'm now 69. But and then it was fun to watch his career grow from you know, one magic shop that all of a sudden two. And then I remember going in there and they had all of these giant um, masks, like the right. Frankenstein mask, yeah. Dracula. He saw, he's the one that came up with those and licensed them and he ended up with stores around the entire All those Halloween magazine. stores we see? Yeah, that's yeah, him? That was wow. him, that was him, yep. Amazing. And, uh, and what are some of the other, I know you, I mean, performing 51 years in, I know you were around the castle a long time ago. Can you tell us some of the more colorful characters that you've met in, since the seventies? Well, I'll just tell you, let's, I'll stick with some of the seventies cause that's a lot of people, but it was starting off with, uh, with Paul Harris. He was a San Diego, I'll go to the San Diego guys. Yeah. He was another San Diego guy. We're one month apart in age. He turns 69 next month. Happy wow. birthday, Paul, wherever you are. And he's kind of an interesting guy. Some people look at him like a vagabond because you never know where he is. I'll be talking to him. He's on, in some third world country, hike in the middle of nowhere. I say, Paul, be careful. Or he might be in the, some uh, jungle looking for Tarzan or swinging with Jane. Yeah. Anyway, so he's a real, real interesting guy, real wow. fun guy. And, and I was there. We, we, uh, in the seventies, I was went to his, one of his lectures and the, the aerospace museum burned down. Mm. We, we were there, somebody lit it, set it on fire and where Lindbergh's, uh, replica of Lindbergh's playing the spirit of St. Louis hmm. was in there on display. And it was really, a, a, really a tragedy. And uh, a guy named Joe McGreevy, who uh, was my ride there, we sat there and watched that piece of history burn to the ground. Wow. And then there was another guy we hung out, I had the privilege of knowing, uh, Bob Sheets. Bob Sheets. Bob Sheets, funny guy. I know yeah. him because of the shell game. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, he started doing stuff, I think, like uh, my friend Whit Hayden, who uh -huh. I've known for a hundred years, too. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Bob, uh, we both, we were looking, working on the cups and balls at the same time, back in the, somewhere in the middle 70s. And we performed together at Balboa, Balboa Park Street. Magic. Wow. Yeah, so that, yeah, you would have this thought This shark, shark used to be a street magician or a street shark. Street, street sharking, yeah. Wow, I did some street sharking at one time, a long time ago. And speaking of, of uh, street magic, that makes me think of Gazzo, who, oh. who is one of the best street performers out there. And I think you had an interesting story about him, didn't you? Well, when I first met him, the first thing he said to me is, he got inspired when he saw me on a show called That's Incredible that aired in 1982. And he was 11 years old at the wow. time. That was kind of cool. Yeah. So that was kind of, a, it's good to find out you have the people that you've inspired. Right. And I've had many people watch that episode and it had it impacted their life in some way or another. So that's kind of cool. And then uh, another guy came to see me back in the 70s, Bill Malone. Funny as all get out. Yeah. 
him alone. I mean, he, you know, jugglers throw balls up, vomits up, he vomits cards up. Instead <laughs> of throwing up cards, he uh, throwing up balls, he throws up cards. Yeah. But, well, yeah, he's Sounds uh, he's, like he's got style. Yeah, he's got style. He's a funny guy. And anyway, how well, about uh, how about Skinner? Oh, Michael Skinner. Yeah, oh, yeah. Skinner. What a cool name. Skinner. I know. Yeah, he would skin you all right. Yeah. He was uh, uh, Steve Wynn's uh, entertainment at the Lily Langtree. We met in 1975, I believe it was, and he was an extraordinarily talented guy. He once performed at the Magic Castle and never did the same trick the entire seven wow. days he was there. Not many magicians can say that. Because at the castle, every day you're doing you do the, same the same routine. Exactly. Wow. Show after show. Every show, one of the, every one of his three shows at that time, and all 20, of which would have been three times seven, 21 shows, not a single repeat of a single wow. trick. That's pretty darn cool. When he got in trouble as a kid, I can imagine his mom going, Skinner, you're skinning everybody again. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and unfortunately, unfortunately, he passed away in 1998, way too young. He was mm. in his 50s. But he was, like I said, he was Steve Wynn's uh, entertainment, the Lily Langtree. And I was there with him one time when wow. Steve Wynn was with uh, George Lucas. The movie guy. Oh, wow. Yeah, we were there. I was there. And we were just I've heard there. of him. Yeah, I've heard of him too. Yeah. So it shows you the people that uh, Mike had the privilege of hanging out with. And I got to hang out with Michael, so I got to see that, sort of, in my own way. Now, <laughs> I heard word on the street. This is a twofold uh, question. The word on the street is you do a pretty mean Di Vernon impression, but also. You have an interesting story about how you two met. It almost didn't happen. Oh, oh yeah. 1975, right now. It was it 50, 50, or no, it about, anyway, almost 50 years ago. I just turned 21 years old, wow. 1975. It was this month, 1975, so 48 years ago. And um, I, uh, a guy named J.C. Wagner. He was one of the local magicians in San Diego. John Wagner. I knew him as John Wagner. He changed his name to J.C. Wagner. Yeah. And I wanted to get into the castle. And he and a guy named Joe McGreevy were my rides there sometime. And uh, I, was, I was working with Bob Yerkes. Y-E-R-K-E-S. Yerkes. Yerkes Circus. Yerkes but he's, uh, he's been doing, he's probably done more stunts and TV shows than anybody in history. Did his first TV show, a, night, a movie in 19... 47 with Elizabeth Taylor wow. called, I think it was Julia Misbehaves. Yeah. And he's been literally on th in thousands of movies and thousands of television episodes. He was a stunt guy and he has a whole circus in his backyard. You remember, you came in? That's a true story. Him. He literally has a circus in the yeah, backyard. Yeah. And, uh, but I was living with him in that, at that time because I was working with him on uh, some of the Circus of the Star episodes and, and stunts for different shows. And uh, I was his gopher for the most part. Yeah. And uh, he, um, He's the one that taught me how to swing on the trapeze, take high falls, hunt sharks, wow. well, not hunt sharks, but a uh, tightrope around the windmill, rim of multi-story buildings, all yeah. that other stuff. Wow. So yeah, yeah, that was fun. Anyway, so uh, I get a call. He said, Richard, it's uh, uh, Rick, he called me back then. It's a phone call for you and I think it sounds important. And so I was up on the trapeze uh, platform with a guy named Vic, Vic Huntsberger, who was yeah. um, Linda Carter's uh, long distance uh, Stunt double because he was an ugly little guy. Good thing there weren't <laughs> cell phones back then. Can you imagine getting that call way up there and you answer and you just fall over? Yeah, well, that's what I did. I, 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 I dove off the because they always had an air bow down below. So I did a flip off into the airbag, got the phone, and it was John, J.C. Oh, wow. Wagner, John Wagner. And he, um, he says, uh, I forgot to tell you, to get into the Magic Castle, you have to have a suit. Ooh. And I thought to myself, a suit? I don't have a suit. I don't like suits. I can't afford a suit. And he, and he said, to, again, there's no way in. You have to have a suit. I said, okay, I will be there with a suit. This is the day before, mind you, because he had already set it up that Vernon wanted to meet me because he heard I could do some pretty pretty good things with the cards, pretty good deals at that time, which I'm going to say were actual crap. I will use wow. that word. <laughs> By my standards, they were horrid. I didn't know the shark was capable of doing it. Crap deals. Oh, I did. Oh, yeah. You learn as you go. Uh, they were crapola. In fact, that's a part of the story. I, uh, I, oh, but I did, the thing is, I needed a suit. So I went down to the Northridge Shopping Center, went into the men's clothing store, cheapest clothing store I could find, one of those racks, three rack, or circular rack, set my cards on the rack, and started thumbing through coats. Found the cheapest one I could find. It was $56 corduroy piece of doo doo. 
And uh, I take it out, try it on, and it fit. And the sales guy comes up to me and says, he sees the cards on the rack, says, I'll cut you a high card for that coat. That salesman knows an easy mark when he sees <laughs> he one, thought, doesn't he? That's exactly right. And I thought to myself, this is my lucky day. I said, okay. And he goes, he backs off. No, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I said, tell you what. I went over to his checkout counter. And back then, I had, I have no, had no forward vision at all. Peripherally, it was 20 over 400. So what I would do to see what the cards, I put the cards up like this, and I'd thumb through, and I pulled out two twos and a queen. And I bent them, and I said, tell you what, if you follow the queen, I'll pay double for the coat. He said, really? I said, really? And then I said, but if you miss it, you give me the coat for free. He agreed. So I, and I kept showing them, moving them, and showing them. There's the queen, there's the queen, how easy it is to follow. And I said, where's the queen? He was wrong. Ooh. Darn him, poor guy. I, I felt sorry for him. I really did. So I said, tell you what, I'll give you a chance to get your coat back. I'll bet you the coat against a pair of pants. He agreed. Somehow he missed again. I, I can't explain it. I, you know, it's just one of those two out of three times in my yeah. favor, I suppose. Wow. And uh, then I said, okay, one more chance. I'll bet the coat and pants against a shirt and tie. Again, he agreed. Yeah. Again, he lost. Ooh. I walked out of it with a brand new suit, didn't pay a dime. Wow. Sucker salesman. If I would have known I was going to have uh, somebody come up to me and challenge me, I would have went. I would have got a nicer coat. I still have that coat too. Nice. If you go, it's downstairs. In so my he was left with his birthday suit. You took he the was suit. Left with his, uh, yes, all he, he had was, was his birthday suit. Yeah, yeah, and it was a pathetic one at that. <laughs> and uh, then, uh, so anyway, now I'm with John Wagner, and we're going into the castle, went through the. The owl, uh, the owl open sesame, and then we went upstairs because back then the library was upstairs. It wasn't now downstairs. It was downstairs in the castle, you know, it was a four-story uh, mansion, and so we went upstairs. And there was only two people, in the, two tables. The divern was at one, and this other guy named Tony Giorgio was hmm. at the other. He's best known as playing, playing Bruna Tattaglia in the Godfather film. He was the guy that slammed the knife into. Bruda Colonia's toughest. I remember and that scene. Pinning it to the bar. Classic scene. Everybody remembers that scene. Anyway, the guy that did the knife slamming was the guy sitting at the table there. And he, I always said, Tony never had to act. He just played himself on TV. A mean, nasty mafia hitman. But then, and we had a 38-year relationship. And, uh, but the first 21 years, he wasn't very nice to me. So anyway, I'm sitting there. John Wagner, John J.C. pushes me towards, says, show him your bottoms. So I did some bottoms, and he goes, that's not, that's not, okay, go, go, thanks a lot, go, go away. You know, he, he, wasn't, he didn't quite say go away, but that was the tone, you know, I did something, he, he just wanted to say, oh, that's nice, yeah. uh, now, now go away. Okay, that was the undertone of what he said. Then J, well, John Wagner, J.C. Wagner says, show him some of your seconds. So I shot, oh, oh, after I did the first bottoms, Giorgio chimes in, won't get to mine. No, that was how he talked. Won't get the money. Won't get the money. You know, it just sounded like an enforcer, a modern mob enforcer. And, uh, and so now I'm pushed forward to do some more stuff. And uh, finally, Vernon goes, I don't care how fine the brief is. When you get like that, you're up to something. Because I was going like this. You know, I was necktie. Necktie. Grid, chain, Claw. Gripping it all. Every bad habit you could have, that was me. And, uh, and he goes, I don't care how fine the brief is. When you go like that, I know you're up to something. And it's special. What'd you say your name again? Turner? Turner? It's not unnatural, Turner. It's unnatural. And, uh, and then he grabbed my hand and pinned it to the table. So, now keep, now keep going there. So I, I did it. And he goes, that's a little better. And Tony chimed in again. Still won't get the money. Anyway, so I sat there and, you know, and I finally got, I, I didn't get his respect. But I took what he heard, what he said to me, and I took it to heart. And uh, when I got home, I remember what he said. You're unnatural in your actions. You know, it's unnatural, and uh, it, it, it tips people off. Become, they become suspicious. So that's when I started developing my hmm. techniques of having a slight, a light, slight uh, touch in all my work. And it was by, you know, the master of Vernon wow. you know, criticizing this punked a little kid, and then after that, he took a liking to me, what, for whatever reason, and I became his uh, protege for 17 years. Wow. Uh, my wife so if you hadn't I, met him, th those refinements might not have ever that, been made. That is exactly right. That is exactly right. Wow. And that's a good, yeah, you're exactly right there, Switch. And now, the Switch is going to... What about this motorcycle magician? Oh. What? 
That was an interesting one. I'll finish off with this. I have, there was, they opened up a Magic Lounge. John Wagner, same guy, J.C. Wagner, the Magic Lounge. And one of the performers there was a guy named Mike Stillwell. And one day I said, Mike, get on my motorcycle. I had a motorcycle back then, which I was not supposed to. I was not licensed to have a motorcycle. And he, he's going, are you sure this is okay? And I'm going, get on and be quiet. And I drove him from wherever we were to where we were going. And he got off there, and he's like six foot four, so he's, yeah. his feet are just down. Wow. And he got off there and go, that is a magic trick I will never forget. Ever, 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 ever. ever. He, so he says the shark, so bites the shark. There, you, there you go, there you have it on this day in 1497. In 1947, exactly. 1497 and 1947.